Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be looking at mainly studio-based work, and in this case, portraits, and how you can utilise layers and blending modes to create your own digital backdrops. Now, with Photoshop these days, you can create them anyway, especially with the AI features, and you can just type in, select subject, type in the new background that you want, and it's there for you. So you can do all that. What I'm going to show you with this is, I suppose a traditional method of doing it, but still using up-to-date tools, which could be remove background, which creates a mask, and then you overlay your background to put your new background texture in, or you, in fact, you could select subject, and then again apply your background. It's entirely up to you how you do this. A mask is required though for it. So without further ado, let's dive right in. What you can see on screen just now is my background elements. Now this is made up of different texture elements. Uh, set for example with soft light, this one is set for luminance and this one is set for multiply and these work against a grey background for the effect that I'm after. On top of that I have a brightness and contrast layer and then on top of this I have the vintage layer. This is a preset that I created a few weeks ago if you saw that video then. And these can all be turned on and off and adjusted. On top of that I have a curves layer and I can go in and adjust the curves in this as well. And last but not least, I have a black and white layer with the opacity turned right down. From here, what I do with the backgrounds is I take all the elements of the group and drag and drop them on top of the image. Now and again, you will get the target document different. I just take yes because it's all depending on the resolution of the images and the color depth of the images. From here, I select my background layer, select subject and create, go open and into the group that I've created with the textures, simply click the mask button and then invert the mask. With the portrait layer selected, go to select subject. Once your subject is selected, go to your texture layer group and click the mask button. With the mask selected, then press Ctrl and I to invert the mask. And as you can see, that's the result that you get. It might not be the tidiest at the moment, but it allows you to go in and then from there refine any elements that are there. You also can go in and choose colours and tones and change it until you get the elements that you want to. And depending on what the model is wearing, you can match the background colours at any point to complement the actual image itself. Quite a warm tone with this one, so I've turned off the vintage preset. And as you can see, I can go in and change anything else within that. I can also go in and add more adjustments to it. So however you want to do this, it is entirely up to you so that you can get the final effect for the image that you are after. It's at this point that I'm happiest. So what I do is I close everything down and press Shift, Alt, Command and E and copy the layer up. In this new layer, it, for me, it's time to go into Camera Raw Filter to add a vignette to it. Now, I work with this type of vignette more than the Camera Raw or Lightroom or Capture One vignettes because I feel as if you've got more control. So I've created a mask and a radial filter within this mask. Place it over the document and then select the Invert button. Now you can see everything that's highlighted in red is everything that's going to be affected by this new vignette that I am creating. So I'll just zoom that in and I'll show you this if I drag that back. You'll see that this allows more control over the vignette and it means you can place it if you want to perhaps bring it down a bit from the top of the image or darken more of the bottom of the image. And this control also works with highlight shadows 
and the blacks and the whites within it. And you can change the shape of it. That's why I like the control of this mask vignette within Camera Raw Filter. Just give it a final wee tweak and get it to the point that I want. Once I'm happy, click OK. So this is the final image. This is the image before and this is the image after. So that's us added our own digital backdrop. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it lets you see how you easily it, you can replace backgrounds if you shoot against grey. Now you can do this if you're shooting in black or if you are shooting against a white background. You can do it and thanks to Photoshop nowadays you definitely can do it. But if you just want to overlay and screen blend and use blending modes to create that background texture that perhaps is unique to you, I recommend using a grey to do that. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.